Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what a wireless access point is. I'm gonna try and break it down so it's as clear as possible. I've got some props and we're gonna explain everything to you really clearly. However, if you've got any questions at the end of this video, please do put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. And if necessary, we'll do some follow-on videos. Okay, so wireless access point. Essentially, a wireless access point is the gold-plated solution for distribution of Wi-Fi. It's the best solution you can get. So if you imagine like an airport, a commercial business space, like a shopping mall or shopping centre, uh, like a school, anything like that, you're pretty much guaranteed that they're gonna be using wireless access points. And what they do basically is they allow you to distribute Wi-Fi. So by that, what I mean is cover a large space with very reliable Wi-Fi. And I'll show you in a minute how they do that. First of all, why are they called? Well, wireless access points are sometimes just called, you might hear them called access points, sometimes just APs, sometimes incorrectly called WAPs or WAPs, but essentially uh, they're all the same thing. Um, sometimes people call them Wi-Fi boosters, that's not quite right, it's a slightly different terminology. Access points are kind of a commercial product. They are also used domestically, increasingly so, as our Wi-Fi demands uh, creep up. But let's get straight into this. So. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you, let's start with this situation. So this is a Wi-Fi router, so like you'd have in your house uh, where your internet comes in and you connect to the internet via Wi-Fi. Okay, so we all understand what these is. These are pretty much everyone has got one of these in the house, not necessarily this model, but something similar. So you've got your router coming in there. So you imagine now that we're in a much bigger space. So let's imagine we're in something like an airport and we've got our router in Terminal 1 and we're trying to give Wi-Fi to everyone in Terminal 1, but also in Terminal 2 and also in Terminal 3. So we want to get that internet connection available to all those people. Now, obviously, this little router is not going to be able to do that because the Wi-Fi has only got a limited uh, distribution and that's just physics. Radio waves are only going to travel so far. They get uh, to solid objects. They just can't get past them, etc, etc. There might be lots of metal. There might be just too great a distance. So essentially, we have to give this router some help because I'm here on my phone in Terminal 1, or sorry, Terminal 2, and I want to connect to the internet, but I can't because I can't connect to the Wi-Fi because it's too far. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say, right, let's put in some access points, some wireless access points. So here we have a wireless access point. So we're going to go to Terminal 2, and we're going to put the wireless access point into Terminal 2, and that is going to help us distribute Wi-Fi. So as the name suggests, wireless access point is actually a descriptor. So what it means is this access point or this wireless access point is giving me wireless access, so Wi-Fi, to the network, which is the router. So which normally means it's giving me wireless access or, or Wi-Fi to the internet. That's basically what it means. And all that is doing is essentially just aiding the router. It's just helping me get another access onto the network so that we can cover a bigger space, we can handle more uh, what's called clients, so your phone is, called a, is a client, or like laptops, TVs, any Wi-Fi device is a client because it's connecting to uh, the wireless access point. So we're helping share the load, so there's we've got two places where we can get to the Wi-Fi, but also helping spread that space out. So, so if you've got uh, big areas, you can cover them. Now, obviously, we've just got a router and a wireless access point here, but this could be this could be many, many access points. There could be you know, it could be hundreds of access points um, to try and cover a, a big area. So, and obviously, the more complex it gets, and the more access points there are, the more advanced that network is. It's not quite as simplistic as I'm explaining here, but this is essentially what a wireless access point is. So the reason why a wireless access point is so good is actually slightly ironic because it's actually because of wires or cables. So wireless access points are nearly always connected via a ethernet cable or a uh, data cable, LAN cable, what do you want to call it? Sometimes it's called Cat5e, Cat6, whichever category it is. So these access points connect back to the network via ethernet cables. So obviously we've only got a very small space here, you know, less than a metre, um, but if you think, Again, back to the airport scenario, we've got Terminal 1, Terminal 2. We can cover a big area with a cable. And the cable, unlike a wireless signal, is able to get through all those solid objects, so like walls, uh, you know, metal, whatever else it is that's going to stop the Wi-Fi 
this cable is able to get through because you can drill through a wall so you can get a cable through it and that's essentially what it's doing and there is virtually no loss of cables so um, the internet speeds and uh, service you get over here is going to be almost identical over here so that is the beauty of a wireless access point the wireless access point is actually wired so ethernet cable goes into the access point and then normally that will go into something called either a power over ethernet injector or a power over ethernet switch and what that does is essentially i've got a i've got a power over ethernet switch here essentially what that does is it gives this access point power over this ethernet cable but it's also giving it data so it's also allowing it to connect to the router so put the switch here uh, so that would go into there and this is a uh, you know one of the power of ethernet sport, uh, ports and essentially what this switch is doing is it is uh, kind of like a splitter you can think of it as a splitter but like a, a much smarter splitter and it's more complex than that but you can kind of think of it as a splitter so on the back of your router you might have uh, LAN ports like this, the little yellow ones normally, uh, and basically that provides you a wired internet connection. So if you were to get a laptop or a PC, whatever it is, TV, and plug that into the back, this and that would give you internet connection. So now you can take that cable, keep that turned around, and you can put it into the switch, which is essentially kind of splitter, and then this is going to give data to this cable and any other cables that are plugged in here. So it's going to give this an internet connection. But it's not only giving this an internet connection, it's also giving it the power. So it's power over Ethernet. So when you're installing wireless access points, you can just put in a single cable to the access point and you're going to be able to get Wi-Fi and it's going to be turned on and everything's going to work really great. So that is essentially what a wireless access point is. So obviously here we've got a very simple setup. We've got a simple router, a simple PoE switch and a, very, a nice access point, but still, you know, uh, one of the lower end uh, models in terms of commercial side so uh, but you could have like literally loads and loads and loads of access points the other thing about access points is normally they are uh, centrally managed so you have a piece of software running on something that is able to control all those access points and they basically work together so they know what's they're all not necessarily aware it's not artificial intelligence but they are that the settings are uh, universal between them and they're able to work together um, so that you don't get interference, etc. and they, uh, they're able to hand off. So say for example, I had another access point and I walked from terminal two to terminal three. I want my phone to be able to jump onto that one without it, too many issues. And that's the kind of uh, software side that they're doing. It really can be quite advanced um, or it can be very simple. You can set up wireless access points if you're having them for your home. You can set them up with just a mobile app. It can be very simple. Ubiquity is a great product for uh, for home use. Um, it's it's pretty pretty competitive on price, and the, and the product is excellent. It's very very reliable. Um, there are lots of other different types of wireless access points as well. So I've got a few down here. Just to I'll just put these to one side. So yeah, I've got lots of other wireless access points down here. So. These are kind of ceiling mounted uh, normally, so they'd sit, you know, like a kind of smoke alarm on the ceiling. You can also put them on the wall. Um, I mean, you can put them wherever you want, really, but they're designed for, for, for ceiling mounting. Um, these these are around about £120, I think, so probably about $120 at the moment with the strength of our pound. Um, so, uh, yeah, so they're pretty expensive, but relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things, especially on the networking side. We've also got... Um, Ones like this, these are designed for like, this is a TP-Link model, um, and this is uh, designed for like fitting on a wall, say like at a socket level. Um, it's quite a nice little device because you can also plug uh, devices into the bottom of it, so it provides Wi-Fi, but it also gives you that option to connect to cable. And you can see there that the cable for it, so the, where the power of Ethernet will come in, is, is in the back there. So that kind of sits at socket level. These are really nice, quite often used in like hotels and things like that. Um, but also we use them a lot in, in homes as well. Then you've got like external wireless access points. So if you want to cover like a garden space or an outside area, then you can put these outside. And these are absolutely fine as long as you don't allow water to get into the bottom, keep them upright. Um, they will work really, really well. And they can cover quite a large area outside because uh, there's nothing stopping the Wi-Fi signal. So it will go quite a long way. Right, then you kind of get the really old or the kind of basic model. So these are, this almost looks like a router. In fact, I think this one actually is a router. 
Uh, but you get ones that look like this um, that are just the kind of simple ones. They're very cheap, um, but they work fine for, for basic demands. And actually, these ones can also just be plugged in using a socket, like a power socket. You don't have to use power over Ethernet. In fact, I don't think this one's got an option to use power over Ethernet. Um, so uh, these are much more simple, very basic, uh, cheap, cheap models. Most of the time, uh, if you were doing a proper commercial installation, you would be using uh, commercial brands. So um, you might be using TP-Link Armada, um, or you might be using Ubiquiti, you might be using uh, some of the sort of smaller uh, business design stuff so these these are kind of for smaller business or you might be using something like Cisco very well-known brand and in a huge uh, huge um, uh, company within the networking space and within wireless access point space if you do go to places like airports and things like that it's a very good chance it's gonna be Cisco equipment that they're running there Aruba is another big one ruckus uh, these are big companies that have got um, very advanced uh, wireless access points and also very expensive um, and most of those services are subscription based as well so you buy a license for a certain period uh, for the smaller stuff this is all non-subscription based um, but very good just a slightly different service so yeah so that is pretty much what a wireless access point is um, really uh, the thing that's becoming uh, more and more um, common these days is for people to have wireless access points such as the Unify stuff installed in the house and that's just because really something like a Wi-Fi booster or like a power line adapter or a mesh system it just doesn't really isn't doesn't have the same capacity and the same performance as a wireless access point so because we've got so many Wi-Fi devices in our house we now need a really reliable Wi-Fi signal and access points are so good the Wi-Fi will be excellent as long as they're placed and installed correctly, they will be very, very good. That is obviously the comp uh, what we do as a company. If you want to check out some of our Wi-Fi installations with uh, access points, then check us out on Instagram and you can see uh, see exactly what it is we do and, and how it all works. So I hope that this video has been useful. I hope I've explained everything. Um, I just wanted to give a brief overview of what wireless access points work uh, are, how they work, and how they can really improve your Wi-Fi. So hopefully I've done that. As I said, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks.